All right, so we know that the ponies, even in Podunk Ponyville, have a currency, which is bits. Yep. Uh, we haven't seen a close-up of the bits, but I'm pretty sure Celestia's face is on them. Well, we, we've seen them close enough to know that they're obviously gold or some sort of they're precious metal. They're obviously some sort of precious metal coins. Who's mining that? I don't know who's mining that. The mining ponies. There's some guy who's got a pickaxe on There's his definitely ass. no mining in Ponyville, that's for sure. That's for sure. It's not a mining town. It's a farming town. Um... So there's def and there's definitely a market where they buy and sell things. So there's definitely some sort of capitalism going on. I However, get the impression though that Applejack's farm kind of has a monopoly on a lot of the food in the area. Well, I mean, at least apples. But there's there's the carrot farms and the grain farms. There's other farms. There's the dairy farm, right? Yep. There's, uh, enslaving the cows is a, a question for I don't know time. if they're necessarily enslaved. I think they're indentured servants. Anyway, regardless, <laughs> right? There's definitely a capitalist pony economy. But yep. at the same time, right? Look at Cloudsdale, right? There doesn't seem to be anyone paying for the weather. It's Cloudsdale definitely, is definitely a sort of government initiative. I think it is definitely like the post office. There is definitely a lot of socialist elements, right? You look at Twink, uh, Twilight Sparkle's not paying for school. She's getting free school from... How do you know her parents aren't paying for it? We don't know. But, it, it's, like, but it's like an apprenticeship. Or like, she's, got, she's got a scholarship or she's something. She's getting room and board for a free education, yep. right? So there's definitely a lot of socialism in this capitalist world, right? Now, what's, what's curious is I'm wondering how much of that is the princess on... I mean, is Princess Celestia unable to control the weather and do the season changes everywhere? Or can she only do the sun and then someone else has to do it? It looks like in Canterlot, uh, from what Twilight Sparkle was saying... Other unicorn ponies get together and they, you know, do the weather change there. But yet in Ponyville, they do it this old traditional way. Well, we haven't seen how exactly they do it in Equestria, right? Is it like this one big spell where it's like snap spring? Or are they just using magic in sort of the telekinesis way to like move the snow out of the way? Yep. And all those sorts of things. Now, right? my theory, at least on the winter wrap up and that sort of stuff, is that in Ponyville, there, I mean, this goes back to my theory that there were just earth ponies. And then the bloodlines came in from the outside and changed everything. The earth ponies for whatever reason, have all these traditions that they follow. And even from the thousand years before, when Celestia was controlling everything, they still have always done their traditional changing of the seasons. I think that Celestia could send unicorns to do that for them or teach them to do it, but they choose not to because it keeps them self-reliant. If something horrible happens, they're able to get by without magic. See, the they thing can is till the feet. If Celestia disappeared and the magic controlling the weather and everything failed, they know how to till the soil. Maybe it was like this, right? Because you can think this was some extraterrestrial invasion by the magical unicorns, Something right? from the outside. No, I don't think it was from the outside. This gives me a better idea. It was, right? We know for a fact Ponyville was an earth pony town. So a long time ago, yep. hundreds of years, they said, right? They've been doing it that way. So Ponyville's been around for hundreds of years. So only hundreds of years ago. Well, not one long, of, there might be other earth pony towns that no, are no, older. It was only earth ponies living there. Yeah, Which I mean, means, I think... That it was actually three separate biological races, perhaps with a common ancestor that was split at some point, much like human beings, right? So it was, you know, and there was some sort of segregation. Pegasuses lived in Cloudsdale. They didn't live with the, right? So there were unicorns, there were Pegasuses, and there were earth ponies all living completely separately. And only perhaps more recently, within the past hundreds of years, did they integrate. A question now. Earth Ponyville, there was Pony Parthai Ponyville that was fixed. Ponyville was founded by Earth Ponies. We know that. That does not necessarily mean there weren't other ponies there. I don't know. I, I have a feeling it was I originally think it was a Earth colony. Ponies only. I mean, look at what the Greeks did in ancient times. They founded these colonies all over the place. I think they were. Land. I think Ponyville was pilgrims who were like, you know, they were all the same, and then maybe. only later did they accept. The Pegasus is new. Maybe there was some sort of aesthetic sect. Like maybe they were the monk ponies who were like, we're going to not use magic and we're going to make this town where we're self reliant, independent of Celestia. Maybe they were originally separatists. But what did that And what maybe that Twilight the... Sparkle is sent, is sent there really to make sure that they don't get uppity. <laughs> what? But that, what does that have to do with the economy, right? So the economy. One thing I want to point out, though, is that in Cloudsdale, like, they make the weather. This is clearly funded by the government. Yeah, there's no one buying the weather. You never see anyone, like, paying Rainbow Dash to move the clouds. She just, it's just her job. Well, maybe it is just her job and she gets a stipend. I mean, we haven't really seen. How did, how did she, I mean, did she just build her fancy house floating there? Does every, yeah, it's made of clouds. She just made it. Does every Pegasus pony in Ponyville have a similarly awesome house? Because we've only no, because seen... No, Fluttershy is a Pegasus, and she lives in a cottage. Yes. No, but I'm saying every pony she we've seen... live in the clouds. Most of them, other than Pinkie Pie, who lives in an apartment, basically, over the cake shop, 
they all like only our main characters have these awesome, awesome like independent houses. No, there are other houses that you've seen in the background that they uh, like. Charlie lives probably above the schoolhouse or next to it. Maybe right. And there's definitely government buildings. The mayor, I don't know if she lives in the city hall, but there is a city hall. But look at the winter wrap up. All the main ponies, except for Pinkie Pie, are leaders of their respective groups. They are kind of the upper class of pony. Well, that's another thing, right? Even if you have a job, right? Doing something, you know, like uh, Fluttershy or whoever, right? Yep. There is, seems to be mandatory government community service for every pony. Right. You know, even though Applejack is, works on a farm and she sells apples. Right. She, you know, and obviously there's some doctor that she can that's capitalist that she can pay to get a new hit for grandma. Yep. Right. Does, she still has to help with the winter wrap up. It's like this mandatory government work that everyone has to do. Now, the question is, is it and nobody nobody's unemployed. Everyone's either in school, nobility or has a job. Well, we're not 100% sure, though. We haven't seen other... I mean, maybe Philadelphia is a shithole. I know Philadelphia is a shithole. <laughs> <laughs> it's a complete, but no, everyone in Ponyville has a job. You know, everyone has something that they do. Now, the real question, though, is, is do they have these government jobs because Celestia can't manage it all on her own? Or is Celestia making things slightly difficult for them in order to teach them lessons, give them something to do. I think it's just both, right? She can only, she only has so much magic, right? She makes the sun go up and down, which is hard. I question right? whether she or not she really does that. She definitely does it because you see her do it at the end of episode two. But I'm wondering if maybe she has set up, her and her sister have set up the mechanism and maintain it, but don't consciously control it on no, a daily No, she definitely basis. does it. I think she Manually. Only, maybe she only manually does it on the special occasions. No, I think she manually does it all the time. I don't know. Pretty sure. And that, because it says she makes the sun go up and down. She Maybe does it. she maintains Just the mechanism. Just like Rainbow Dash moves the clouds around. The mechanism created in ancient days, perhaps no, by her, She magically by uses the telekinesis of her, of her unicorn horn to make the sun go up. Because I'm really curious as to whether or not the sun goes up and down the same way in the Everfree Forest. Uh, I'm wondering, no, the Everfree Forest is always dark. The sun does not shine in the Everfree Forest. That's why I'm forest. curious. Is the sun a celestial body or is the sun something else? Yeah, I don't know if the sun is a celestial body or not, but whatever the sun is, she is manually controlling Until it. Until we see a sunrise or a sunset outside of Equestria, I really call shenanigans on that whole thing. Well, you, she's making it go up and down. It might not be a gigantic ball of burning hot fusion far away in space. It could just be a pretty close fireball that she moves around. Regardless, whatever the sun is, she has control of it completely. She could bring it down and burn everybody if she wanted to. Or she could make it. She could make it so it never rises again. Be like, hey, whatever. Yeah. And because no, when she wasn't there, it didn't rise, right? Now, is it because she wasn't there, or because Luna broke the system, or because Luna did something active to prevent it from coming up? Well, I think maybe. The I mean, it sun, could be like a spell. Look, it, in D and D, you can cast a spell like Flaming Sphere, Sphere, and it sits there and it just does its thing, and you have to concentrate and say, "All right, go do your thing somewhere else." Uh, I think it was of... it was two things. Number one, Luna had the moon up, and I think the moon and the sun, whatever they are, right, uh, and they must not be that far away if Luna was literally in the moon, right? Uh, was she really literally in the I moon, think or was that, are, that just like... the circle of the magic that confined her? No, she was actually up in the moon, and I think that it was the you know they're they're much like two magnets that have you know, the same pole, right? The sun and the moon can't get too close to each other; they repel, right? But so in addition to bringing the moon up and refusing to bring it down, which makes it harder for her to raise the sun because it's pushing against the moon. She also trapped Queen uh, Princess Celestia, so she wasn't there, so she couldn't even push try to push the sun up. Right, because the moon was there and she was trapped. Well, anyway, back to the economy. I don't think all this is kind of a random aside. I don't think all of the snowflakes are hoof made. I don't think all snowflakes. I'm are pretty made sure either. that they make the templates and the special snow, like maybe for special occasions. I think the good snow is used in Canterlot, and that Ponyville gets the mass manufactured snow. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they're designing like here are the 15 snowflakes for this year. And then they put them in the machine, like in a fab that just makes that snowflake. Oh, they design times. all the snowflakes by hoof. And then I think that's it. I think they design them every year. Possible. There's no way they make them all by or they or what they do is they can design them by hoof and then use magic to make more. But there's only Pegasus is working in the snow in the weather factory. Yeah. Right. Which means that the manufacture of rainbows and snowflakes can be done without unicorn magic. But they have in they have industry. They have machines. I mean, there are machines making clouds. It, well, it's true. They did. And right. remember, Twilight Sparkle too. She had that science thing that she failed to use to figure out Pinkie Pie's twitch. It's also true. So they have machinery. They, they have, have machinery. advanced machinery. They have clearly access to steel. Yep. Uh, 
But yeah, I think that definitely the way it works is that Celestia cannot do all the work on her own, right? So there needs to be ponies do also doing the work if they want to manually control Equestria as opposed to letting nature have any so sort of... The fun and on top of that, she intentionally keeps it that way so that everyone has a job and there's no homeless bums or moochers or anything like that. So the fundamental question then is, so she's, are they, I mean, they fund these works. Do they do it on an ad hoc communist basis? As in, you know, these people in uh, Kazakhstan are making whatever components and then they just make them knowing that they'll get the benefits of the fact that the components were made later. Or is the government run by Celestia actually paying everybody? And if so, are there taxes? I, you know, the thing is, you gotta look- I think it's a proper communism where there is no, like, there is no centralized control of an economy. I don't think the government is printing coins and using them to pay for goods and services. I think everyone is just doing their part. And that, like, it's a machine, that's, it's a managed economy. It's not a managed economy necessarily solely by currency. I think what it is is that if you are a, a government worker, right, like Rainbow Dash, right, you don't need money, right? You're a you're, 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 you're Twilight Sparkle. You don't need money. Unless right? you want you just, something. The government that, just gives you stuff. I mean, if you want an apple in the market, you've got to buy it. Well, no. Twilight Sparkle just went to that restaurant and they brought food out to her. How do you know she didn't pay? She didn't pay. You didn't see her pay. Yeah, they might have cut away. It's not like... I mean, everyone ran away from the rain. Maybe they forgot. But people clearly were paying for apples and Gilda fucking stole an apple. She didn't pay for it. That's true. But I don't think the government And they employees... don't have marks. It's not like in the temporary series where they make their mark to say, like, I have bought this. It's not like they have a ledger or anything. I don't think the They're government exchanging employees... exchanging coins. The government employees do not have to buy things. I think only the other ponies need money. No, I think that certain things are guaranteed. Like the crop, the basic food is available to everyone. If you need food, you get food in Ponyville. But if you want to buy, like, the fancy apple... Well, it's like apple, anyone can just walk around eating grass. But if you want to buy the fancy apple, or you want to get the fancy smoothie, grass smoothie, or you want to buy the diamond or anything like that, you need money. So you get all your basics taken care of, but if you want fancy things, you've got to buy them or barter for them. Well, I mean, the thing is, a lot of things, though, uh, it's like all you really would ever buy with money, right, is, like, a dress from Rarity. Gems, or diamonds. Gems or gems di or something like that, right? Nobody has to buy books. Apples. People were buying apples from Apple Blossom yeah, and Apple Jack. Yeah, but you don't have to buy books. You just get them at the library. There was no, right? If you want to borrow them, if you want to own one, I think you have to buy it with gold. I don't know. I mean, are you even allowed to own a book unless... I don't think anyone reads except Twilight Sparkle <laughs> in Ponyville. Oh, did, we've seen in the insides of other people's houses. Did, did anyone else have any books in their house? Fluttershy didn't have any books. Might have had a bookshelf. I don't know. I didn't see any books. I didn't see any. She had a lot of nice furniture that was broken, but... <laughs> yeah, it's like, did she make that furniture? She... Clearly not. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely some sort of strange economy. But I think the princess wants it that way. It is clearly a managed economy. It is clearly communism, ponyism, ponyism. Well, that's why they don't let nature, nature take take its course. There is no that removes all uncertainty, right? You can't have a bad crop if you're if you're controlling the weather, right? So there can never be a pony drought or a pony flood. Or right? I I think there I think there are except you know because one time Rainbow Dash was like we got to get out here before she causes a drought. During the winter wrap up, they pointed out very specifically that if they don't get the harvest set up, you know they're running out of stored food. If they screw up the winter wrap up, they have problems. And yeah, they might, but it's and but I think it's all they would have on to do, them. Nature can't fuck no, them. Yeah, but I they think, can fuck. I think if they fuck up though, they have to go to Canterlot to get aid. Possibly. 